Bruce Lee faces a real dilemma. He's on the verge of a stardom in the United States with a projected TV series on the horizon, but he's just achieved superstardom as a film actor here in Hong Kong. So what does he choose, the East or the West? It's a kind of problem uh, that most budding movie actors would welcome. It's the Pierre Burton Show, the program that comes to you from the major capitals of the world. Interesting, that you, uh, we don't, in our world, and haven't since the days of the Greeks who did, combined philosophy and art with sport. Ultimately, martial art means honestly expressing yourself. There is nothing that will tax your body physically like mixed martial arts will. It fries every muscle in your body. It gives you a lot of mental toughness, and that translates into anything else you do in life. If you fought in front of 2,000 people, giving a speech in front of 30 people really isn't that big a deal. Empty your mind. Be formless, shapeless, like water. As you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. You put in a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Appreciation of that moment in life. And if I can carry that then to the rest of what I did, then I'm living. And you have to train. You have to keep your reflexes so that when you want it, it's there. When you want to move, you're moving. And when you move, you're determined to move. Like somebody that races motocross, somebody that, you know, snowboards and jumps off cliffs. Why do they do that? Why do people jump out of airplanes? Honestly, express yourself. It doesn't matter, I think. You're watching a fight. You're watching you. And now you're like really detached from it. And you're watching this dude land on you. And you're thinking, dude, what are you doing? You need to tap. Yeah. What do you do? Get out of it. Dude, just give up the fuck. What are you doing? But then there's the other side of you that's like, no way. He had it. It was locked out. I knew it. He knew it. Anybody that was watching the screen knew it. Well, did you ever, did you ever consider tapping? No. How come? <laughs> that's not me, man. That's as straight as my arm actually goes now. Um, the kid that did it is named Chris Manuel. He's actually a very nice young man. He won a decision. And he earned it. He, he won a decision. He, he was the better fighter that night. The thing that's frustrating is I couldn't beat him. That's one of the results of damage and not seeking treatment. I personally chose not to seek treatment. Mm -hmm. I could have signed. I could have, you know, had treatment for it and, you know, probably been able to straighten my arm all the way. I can hug my wife. I can lift my kids. I can throw a ball. I'm good. Three, two, one. Hi, my name's Jeff Bourgeois. I'm 36 years old and I'm a mixed martial arts fighter. Load up, we're gonna go up. I'm gonna corner one, definitely, maybe two guys. One guy, it's his first fight, John Mariansky, super nice kid, it's his first fight. So he's, uh, he's jazzed, man. How old is he? Uh, John's probably 21, 22. Really? Wrestled in high school, um, nice guy, coaches from wrestling with high school kids. So you guys like watching MMA, right? Yeah, it's pretty tight. How come? Because you get to see people get their heads smashed in. Really? Yeah. The blood, man. <laughs> do either you guys? Do you guys train? The one thing about this sport is you can, you know, you can see after, you know, before every round they're going out there and tapping gloves. You know, they go in there do what they're gonna do. You know, they always look like they're coming out friends. You know, there's a lot of respect. It takes a lot of balls just to step in the ring for, you know, win or lose. It took balls just to step in that ring. You gotta fill out your little release form and, and all that, and then they. Uh, you know, they do the heart rate and the blood pressure and all that. Ask them if they've been knocked out in the last 30 days. And the guy that got knocked out two weeks ago will go, no. Because <laughs> he still wants to fight. Any predictions, anything? It's going to be a good fight. It's going to be a good fight for yeah. you. You're going to bring it? Yeah, yeah. Um, any unsportsmanlike conduct, you'll be disqualified. This is an amateur event. I was in Las Vegas last year for an iPro convention. 
Um, all the best referees, judges, Jay Needy, Joe Cortez, all the legends were there. Mark Ratner, everybody. And somebody died at a fight we all went to. One punch to the back of the head. It's the weirdest feeling. I've been to a lot of fights, but um, one punch. Guy turned around and, you know, yeah, he shouldn't have turned around, but he shouldn't have hit him either. The guy died that night. And so before you foul somebody, really think about it. <laughs> I had such a good time. I, I, uh, I saw you smiling. I was smiling like the whole fucking time when everybody was telling me this. Like, you're doing a good job checking, your, checking the kicks too. I only got like one or two good kicks off, I think. I think you got more than that. <laughs> it feels like you got more than that. I saw you get one time and I was like, oh shit, it's starting to hurt, you know? Yeah. You just don't show it that they hurt. Oh man, I couldn't ask for a better opponent. He pushed the pace, he made me work hard, threw some things at me I wasn't used to, and uh, it was a great fight. It was awesome, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. Feel that, feel that. Well, I mean, you know, you're about to get in there with a guy that wants to, you know, cause you problems. So, you know, it is what it is. time with uh, coming to grips with the fact that I'm going to be going in the ring and a guy's going to be trying to hurt me. And nobody likes pain. Nobody. No matter how, how much this guy tries to tell you, yeah, I enjoy it, I love it, you know, somebody even flicks pain on me, they're full of shit. It's not human nature. It's not right for you to enjoy pain. I was trying to hit this guy in the face and he was trying to hit me in the face and it was like, mid-swing, I'm like, I don't like this. The guy hit me and he's like, bam, as soon as he hit me, I was like, I forgot all about what I was thinking about. And I was thinking, I'm gonna kill this motherfucker. I remember a lot of my thoughts throughout that fight. It was like my first punch when I punched the guy. I was thinking, God, this is weird. I'm trying to hit this guy, you know? I just punched this guy in the face. Hit him again, bam. I was like, that was a good punch. That was good form. Like, Fuck, I don't think I really like this. You know, I don't know if I wanna be a fighter. I don't think I like this. And then I, you know, threw a swing back, missed, and he punched me, and, and I was like, fuck that, I'm gonna kill this guy. And it was, the, my doubts of fighting was, was over. 
name's Kobe Parmenter, I'm a mixed martial artist, 30 years old, background in Judo, about 20 years, started mixed martial arts probably about a year ago. And had I not been fortunate enough to work with the guys I, I get to work with um, for the standing part, I'd have been really unprepared when it came to the boxing part. Cause, you know, I, I grew up, I'm not going to say on the streets, street fighting, but I grew up, you know, fighting a lot in school and, and uh, I was known as a scrapper or whatnot, but I still didn't have the hands that I always thought that I did going into this sport. And when I started really working with guys that had good hands, they were landing shots where, you know, they're sticking the jabs and every time I come in for a punch where I feel that I have a good punch set up, it was getting taken away by a decent jab. And that's what I was doing to him. I think he practiced way more than anybody else. You know, sometimes seven days. If you give him a chance, he'll do it twice a day. You know, that's too much on his body. You know, you need to let your body recuperate sometimes, you know, sit back and but for him, just the sport is everything, basically. It's about April, is it April 17th, 1986. We had a day of school, I got let out, uh, you know, like 2.15 2 I think it was, and I was coming down this hill up here and uh, uh, lost my brakes and smacked into the side of, of a moving car. Um, my friends and I had ridden all around the neighborhood and we were chasing each other and uh, we ended up at the top of this hill up here and uh, somebody dared me to ride down this hill or race me, you know, and uh, so we were taking off and I was taking off down the hill and my chain came off my bike. I remember uh, looking down at my uh, pedals and just saying to myself, oh fuck, and then after that was lights out, I don't remember. Kobe get into a fight when somebody was picking on somebody that's smaller. Yeah. He, he was pretty good about that. He had a friend that was a lot smaller than him. And you remember that? Mm -hmm. Broke my hand on that guy's face, too. Yeah. 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 Kobe pretty much grew up without a male presence in his life because um, I divorced when he was about five. Well, Kobe could have gone either way, mm -hmm. you know, as far as the law. And Scott, his sensei, had specific rules to do the judo, um, no fighting outside of the mat. And that kind of kept him on the straight and narrow. He could have been a, a real street brawler, I think. You know, I, I always called him my kamikaze child because, you know, everything, he went with 110%. The paramedics told me later that he must have been going, a, or was it, I think it was the police told me later, he was, he must have been doing about 40 miles an hour, 45 miles an hour. Hit it right at the door. He did um, a couple thousand dollars damage with his face. And he broke everything on one side of his face and wiped his nose off. Wow. Uh, he was unrecognizable. But I remember being told that they didn't expect him to live because he had brain swelling. Fortunately, none of that happened. Now, he was in a coma. He was in ICU for, and in a coma for about a week. They just said he um, should never be hit in the head. Ever? Ever. Kobe so. doesn't listen well. strike uh, the entire time I was looking to strike with the guy that was my game plan was to keep him standing and knock him out his game plan was obviously to go to the ground and his tactics and doing so were pretty confusing to me I didn't expect that through my frustration I just had a hard time striking I was looking for more submissions but when you add in punches 
in trying to submit somebody, it kind of changes the element of the fight. He went into guard and I passed, I passed his guard, got in half guard. He did kind of like a figure four on my knee and I felt my knee pop and I pretty much knew it was, it was a story at that point. meniscus tear from a fighter. It's bound to happen. Any type of setback is always frustrating. This is just, to me, it's a minor setback. This is this is a combat sport. You know, to, I accept the risks that I that I take. Sometimes you know you work, and sometimes you get work. So that's fighting. You know, somebody's got to lose. But uh, I wouldn't trade. You know, my my fights. You know, win or lose, man. I wouldn't trade them for nothing because that's mine. You know, nobody could take that from me. Nobody could go in there and do the exact same thing that I did, you know. Everybody has their own little, you know, that's your story, you know, when you fight those guys, that's that's your memory, you know. And uh, yeah, I wouldn't trade it for nothing. When I started doing it, no, there was no Ultimate Fighter. I mean, UFC wasn't even on cable again, you know. No, nobody was watching that stuff, you know. At first I thought I just wanted to do it, uh, just to do it, but then I kind of fell in love with it. And uh, now I don't really know what I would do if I didn't. I don't like anything else. I don't like any other sport. I don't like, I don't do anything but uh, train and sleep, work. Nothing else interests me. A lot of guys that I fought don't work. They share an apartment with three other fighters and they teach a class of jujitsu or you know they work in a gym or and then they train you know six hours a day three hours in the morning three hours at night whatever i was trying to deal with my wife and my kid and work a job and still train you know which i did but i don't know how far i you know i could have gone you know maybe this is as far as i could have gone or or whatever but uh you know, I, I just didn't have that option. Well, I've watched Josh pretty much since the day he started go from everybody tap dancing on him to now he's the shark. I think with his gifts, you know, he'll be able to do things and go places that I never would have achieved. tournament he competed in as a white belt. He took gold. He won at several of the local tournaments. Uh, he was one of the quickest people that I've ever promoted to blue belt. I think he got his blue belt in uh, six months, whereas normally, you know, you're looking at anywhere from a year to two years to get a blue belt for your average person. I think that training has really uh, had a great effect on his life. I think uh, for being the age that he is, he's very mature, and he, he's maturing every day that he's been in here training. Let's start it again. Good job. He's relatively young, and he's really talented. Not married, you know, this guy's got nothing to do but train and fight, and you know, he could be, he's gonna do things that I only dreamed about doing, you know? He has physical gifts that a lot of people wish they had. It would break my heart for him to not forge that talent. Three. Well, you go up against somebody that's just as physically talented or even more physically talented than you, but he hasn't uh, forged himself in the fire. He hasn't, you know, come out here and done the work to temper his, temper his body, and he'll break way before you do. He's got all the physical tools, but if we don't forge him, 
it's gonna break. He's gonna break. You know, he's a young man. He's trying to figure out where he is in life, and he works hard at his job and trains hard and all that. I would hate for for somebody to have not taken him and tried to help him at a crucial point in his life be a better person. That's what you're gonna feel during the fight. You're just gonna feel it when you're in your corner. You're gonna feel this cold on there. You're gonna be talking to you very small things, very small things. If you're doing stuff right. So we ain't gonna have to try and reinvent the wheel. We're gonna be talking little things, man. Just all right, Josh. Stay low. You're doing good. Stay low. You know, just little things is all you're gonna hear. Cause you don't have to try and take in a bunch of stuff. Good work, man. Nah, you talking. There, there is a, a spiritual need that's that's kind of filled where I believe it's my duty uh, to be the best I can be. You know what I mean? To not take shortcuts in anything. But natural talents and gifts aren't the end all. It's it's up to me to, to take the gifts I've been given and to maximize them. This is all temporary. All this is, this is temporary. You know, body is temporary. Body is temporary. Your things are temporary. These hand wraps, I, I'm going to roll them up nice and I'm going to take care of them. They're temporary. It's just getting that right, right mindset. Keep it. Not growing tired and weak mentally. This jumping rope is good for my lungs. It's better for my mind. I'm tired, dude. I want to stop. I want to look at the clock and see when it's time to quit. But you don't. You go till the bell rings. There's so many times I would swear on a stack of Bibles that the freaking clock is broken. So many times. You're just like, there's no way. It has not been three minutes. It, it's got to have been three minutes. And then, you know, so you'll actually look. you look and you're like, it's only been two minutes. Let me look. Is it counting down right? Oh shit, it is. So you know, it's that mental game. You know, that's why I know that I can be great. It's because you can't touch my heart. You can't touch my mental edge. You might win, but you can't beat me. You can't beat me.
feel really bad that uh, that the guy got hurt like that. That wasn't what I wanted. I wanted my hand raised, but not like that. That's not what it's about, you know. I don't. I didn't want to see a guy get hurt like that, you know. I mean, just keep him in my prayers and, and hope that he's okay. You know, that's all you can do. You know, you go in there and you, you understand the risks that are involved. You just, you know, you just hope it doesn't happen like that. And, you know, I kind of got more frustrated when I realized I wasn't letting my hands go and it kind of got in my head. So that part really kind of pissed me off more than anything. My hands are better than what I showed and it's frustrating. Sorry, coach. I'm sorry. Why are you always sorry after this? Because I always suck. You did good. You won. I win, but I suck. It's frustrating. I'd rather I'd rather win and suck than be awesome and lose. You always deviate from your game plan. I yeah. But it's frustrating, man. I'm sorry. When I first start training fighters, I want to start them out on the ground. I get them with a good ground base. And I met Sean two and a half years ago. He uh, came into the gym in Gig Harbor and I said, you know, I'll train you, no problem. Sean's just a complex kid. His dad uh, passed away when he was younger. For some reason, I never feel safe putting him in the ring because I care about him. Like he's my brother, you know? Sean's life is infinitely better because of the training and the fighting. I like to read about the guys that I fight about. You know, once I figure out who I'm fighting, I like to figure out, you know, what their stats are, who they've lost to, you know, what's their best thing. That's what I do, you know, I'm, I'm a scout. You know, I, I, you know, I go into a fight to impress the crowd. I don't go into a fight to go for the easy victory. I go, you know, I want to stand up and bang. When I read about Jeff, I'd known that he was a good ground fighter. I was only, I was 3-0, but I think that I had had some pretty easy fights, you know, I don't think the other guys that I fought were, you know, as good as me, and I knew that Jeff was a little bit better than me, and had trained in a lot harder places than me, and fought a lot different, a lot harder people, and went all three rounds with all of his guys, you know, so I've never done that, you know, out of the second round, I was wasted, tired, my second fight. I remember going in my corner, and I remember looking at my, my guy, I remember looking at my trainer, and I'm going, I lost that first round, man, I don't know what I'm going to do, you know, I'm, I'm fucking dizzy. I'm tired, man, this is 30 seconds left. And they went in to hook my leg, and I pulled my leg out. And uh, as soon as I pulled my leg out, he pushed me in, my leg snapped. I didn't know what had happened, I was paralyzed. I couldn't move my whole body. I mean, it's not like, I mean, I could move my arms, stuff like that, my waist, you know, I was really dead, I couldn't move it. Um, I didn't know what had really happened. I thought, you know, maybe I just twisted it wrong, you know, not a big deal, we can work on it. A couple stitches here and here. Uh, two microscopes in the knee and a whole ACL replaced. I have no hard feelings towards Jeff whatsoever. Jeff did what he was supposed to do. Once I started tapping it, he got right up. He knew exactly, boom. He didn't continue to pound on me. He was very kind. He wrote on the internet, you know, he wrote a little thing about me and hope, hope, hopes my knee gets better, you know, and, and you know, I uh, had all the fighters that I could think about. That's the only person I could say that's actually said something nice about somebody, you know what I mean? You know, being a fighter-wise, uh, my whole family, everybody's with me, uh, supports me 110%, and uh, you know I, I couldn't ask for a better you know life right at this moment. It's, it's good. Life is good right now. <laughs> Put your chin down. Look up. Cover your temples. And then. Okay, throw that hip on top of him. Okay? Just work it a few times like that. This generation is gonna be so different. Think about it. I mean, we've got him fighting like this at, at 15 years old. Ashley's had a kickboxing match. Matt's a good grappler. You know, she's helping him striking. He's helping her with her grappling. You know, I mean, it's, they're 15 years old. Think about what they're gonna be like when they're our age. Stick your hand in that way. I think the best thing that I take away from my training is just the knowledge. Because, like, I go to school in downtown Tacoma, and just, like, if I were to be approached by some guy or something, just to know how to defend myself. I have a lot of friends. These guys are like my second family. I do not believe that 
there is such thing as like Chinese way of fighting or the, or the Japanese way of fighting or whatever way of fighting because unless human being have three arms and four legs we will have a different form of fighting mm. but basically we have only two hands and two feet so styles tends to uh, 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 not only separate men, you know, because they have their own doctrines and then the doctrine became the gospel truth, you know, that you cannot change, you know. And, but if you do not have styles, if you just say, well, here, here I am, you know, as, uh, as a human being, how can I express myself totally and completely? Now, that way, you won't create a style because style is a crystallization, you know. I mean, that way, it's a process of continuing growth. In his um, report, he just kind of summarizes what happened, that you had a match on November the 18th. You were in a position, the opponent was, I think, basically had you in a, in a position in which your leg was getting pulled back farther and farther. And he extended and it out. Then he extended it. You felt your knee lock, and then there was a popping and a giveaway sensation. And you continued to fight, Correct. which is unbelievable. And I punched but him in the, the face a few times after that. <laughs> the MRI scan um, demonstrated a complex tear. So what we've got in this model, the posterior horn of the medial meniscus. Medial is always to the inside. Okay. So when we're looking at your knee, this is the bony outline. The joint line's right in here. The meniscus is right here. So this kind of bluish mark past here, you can see where I've marked it in prior patients. You have a tear here. Complex tear means that it's both a horizontal component going this way. And there's also a secondary vertical component. So, so when is your surgery scheduled? Um, this Thursday. This Thursday, and today is Monday, so we got three days. Questions at all? Other than why did it have to happen to me? <laughs> no, I don't ever question that. I mean, I. Right. That's life. That's, that's part of what's exactly. what you're doing. You're a very motivated guy, so I know what's going to happen is you're going to come out of there, you know, all guns blazing in terms of rehab. So I anticipate that you'll be on the fast track. Yeah. Train for you know 46 hours a day sometimes, and and uh, um, I work eight hours a day, ten hours a day. You know, I don't really have a whole lot of personal time. I don't really have a personal life whatsoever. But that's the way I. That's my life. That's the way I choose it. You know, to live my life. Either I'm, I'm going to become a, a professional fighter and I'm going to make good money doing this, or I'm going to become a pro professional fighter and I'm going to make no money in this. Uh, it doesn't really matter to me. It's, I get to do the sport. I do what I love. It keeps me healthy. It keeps me sane. I'm happy doing this, man. I keep, I keep control of his head. Notice how he's bending back in that direction. This is the first step of off balance in judo, right? So I step, boom, I lean just a little bit. And my second step, is I'm gonna drag this foot across the floor. Right here. And I'm loading him up for the throw. This will be the last technique for the evening. Some of you are doing this throw already. It takes about a thousand times to learn a technique, literally. The throw that I did in the fight, I've done that so many times. I did that throw without even thinking about it. I don't even remember doing the throw. I just I just did it. So that's that's when you get to the point where you know you've done it a thousand times, it becomes instinct. I do everything I need to do to, to get better and uh, um, get back to my habitual habit of, of fighting. You know, this is, a, this is a drug, man. I, I, I think what bothers me the most is the prospect of not being able to work out for more than a week. Lower, Josh. Stay in your ring, Paul. Don't let him finish that, Josh. Head, head, push, 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 push his head. Put two on one, two on one. Push, push his head, two on one. That's one on one. Two, two hands on his head. Two hands on his head. Great. Chin down, chin down. Angle, angle, angle. Dude. Pass that, pass that then. Heavy, heavy, heavy. Break. Good job, man. Keep going, Ian. Nope. Head up, Keep head going, up, Ian. Up. Don't stand there. Don't stay there. Got to turn around. Turn around. Stop! Everything bad, I want it to happen here, you know? 
anything wrong, I want it to happen in here, not in the fight. Just so it won't be nothing new to me. So if he tries to do it in me in the fight, then it's something I do every day in training. He's backing up, Cameron. Come on. There. Drop. 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 Lower. Circle. Yes. Hands. And out. And out. And out. Relax it. Hey. There it is. Go work. Go work. Mm -hmm. Okay, you, that a little bit? you don't get too much of this because it's got the creatine, taurine, and all that jazz you up stuff, and I need you to get that sleep. Hands are still dropping some, Josh. Yeah. need you to help me out, man. Make me feel better by not doing that, please. Do you want to be a fighter? That's the question. That's why I'm here. It's not about cutting weight. It's not about living in a fucking house. It's about do you want to be a fighter? It's not all fucking signing autographs and banging broads when you get out of here. It's not. It's no fucking fun, man. It's a job, just like any other job. So the question is not did you think you had to make weight? Did you think you had to do this? Do you want to be a fucking fighter? That is my question. And only you know that. Beautiful. He's got separation here already. I, I know. know he's that. awesome. So we have a really nice VMO, really good. See your other I've been working the heck out of it. Yeah, so. vastus lateralis. You can even see his intermedius and rectus there. What I'm trying to get him to do, if his spine was a straight line, to squat in a straight line, because when you have these, this weakness in this leg, you'll see him move like a check mark. They'll move to their strong side and back up. Get over on that leg. Better. Concentrate. Good. Good, good, good. Yeah, good. I don't have doubts about if I go out there and, and fight somebody, you know, I don't think, oh, I'm going to lose this fight. I never think that. I go in every single fight knowing I'm going to win the fight. You know, I don't think, oh, this guy's a good striker. He's good on the ground. He's better than I am. What is he going to do to me? I don't worry about that shit. You know, I look at it as this guy's a victim. Very small difference between me and the guy that's ahead of me. The only difference is, is he's got a few more fights than I do. my body is to the point where it is just gonna let me know it's done it's mind over matter it really is mind over matter that's why sometimes i count just 10 10 10 instead of 10 20 30 you know you just count 10 because anybody can do 10 push-ups anybody can do 10 sit-ups actually i think we're at about 130 man <laughs> you're saying 10 i think we're at 130 don't focus on those other 120 well, i'm predisposed to be able to do that and to push a guy that's not to the point where he doesn't break mentally come on there you go, keep going. Halfway, don't stop. Half will become three quarters. I can see it coming. Over, 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 over. That's over. Bring it up. Come on. But you help him get to that point. Mm -hmm. Dude, that feels good, man. Mm -hmm. That feels good. That's something that I take pride in is mm -hmm. to be able to help people. Now, like, if I keep my head down and I try and come through, I'm going to have trouble. What I really want to do is I want to sculpt to his back and I look to the ceiling. I've got good pressure on his shoulder here, okay? I can try and control in here, or I can pass all the way out. But my goal is I'm gonna get out, I'm gonna release some pressure off of Scott's shoulder. I'm working good jujitsu. I'm not putting my knee down in between his legs. I'm not putting them in the knee bar sight. This way, all the way, all the way, all the way, right? Three quarter turn, this way's quarter turn. Here, on me, do it on a midget. <laughs> you got one more in you. There you go, pinch behind my elbow. Go, go, go. 
go, go, go. Turn, turn, turn. That's one. That's one. Good work. It's amazing how accepted MMA has become. When Jeff first started doing MMA, or, or we would be watching them, I, it was really, it was, you know, you didn't want to tell people about it. You didn't want your, your kids, friends, parents knowing, you know, because it just wouldn't go over well. And now it's just completely embraced. They're actually considered athletes, which they weren't before. They were considered, you know, monsters or whatever. It was probably something that nobody wanted to admit that they were interested in. And then it was like, oh, you like it too? And once then it was general acceptance. Nobody wants to step out of the box and say that it was cool. Yeah. But once uh, suddenly it was generally accepted, everybody's a fan. You know, all these closet UFC watchers are now suddenly willing to say that they watch it. This is my home, uh, Sumner, Washington. Lived here about four years, I guess. And uh, it's the first home my wife and I bought. We were together for about 12 years, and then I kept telling her I'd get her a good house. So she liked this one, so I got her for it, because that's my job. And then, you know, basketball hoop for the kids. You dunk on that? Oh, dude, yeah. You think? Yeah. See that right there? I'm a dunking machine, dude. He, he definitely worked me in slowly to the whole concept of him doing it. I'm fine once they're over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whether it's win or lose, I'm fine once they're over. But it's just the anticipation of and the knowing that he could get hurt, really, is... is um, you can't hurt this. Yeah, I know. Bye-bye, Dad. Dude, you're so not having it. <laughs> yeah. My dad beat me once. How many times did he beat your dad? Twice. Two, three, two, three. Nice. Good work. Oh, dude! That took like three power shots from me. You can have that cookie after, but you need to do what you're told. I already ate my lunch. I'll split this one with you. Okay? You want to choke me? No? Yes or no? What'd you yeah. say? Yeah? Oh, okay. oh, there's one, there's two. Now he's got control. I've never gotten paid for a fight. I paid a fight. I paid to drive up there. I paid for my wife's ticket. I mean, you know what I mean? You've never made any money off of any of your fights. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, no, no, okay. none. <laughs> <laughs> no, none. Never gotten a dollar. He stood up with him, but didn't really engage long enough. I could have figured that that's what I would like to do. I'm not standing too many to the bad of the bad of the bad of the bad of the For real. So I put my stock on the show. Yeah, I'll donate the medical research. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 I used to get in a lot. If I wasn't training, dude, I'd be getting in so much trouble. My dumb ass was like in and out of GV and shit. Started training, really enjoyed it, and fucking learned a shitload, and that's how I just stuck with it. I haven't got bored yet, man. I keep learning every day. Hey, and you brush your teeth. Make sure you floss. You brush, you brush your teeth. I don't need your mom coming after me for no dental bills with your cavities, man. Alright, move along. Thank you, Joe. You're welcome. They're good, huh? There's a reason those guys are in that show, and uh, most of them are genetic freaks, top of the line in whatever single sport that they did before that. A lot of guys can put it all together in the gym, but not a lot of guys can go out there and put it together in front of 20,000 people, you know? Yeah. And those guys can't, you know? And that's why we pay 45 or whatever amount of money to watch a fucking fight, you know? <laughs> yeah. I applaud them. <laughs> I would just say, if he wasn't doing this, I don't know what else he'll be doing. Because, you know, it just seems like this is everything for him. Because he goes to practice in the morning, in the, to the gym in the morning. He After work, he'll go and practice. I'm like, you know, seven days a week. And I, I just denied the fact that I was injured in the first place. So, um, you know, I, I, 
agonized through the uh, through the tough parts and, and uh, pushed on through, and here we are. I'm not claiming to be the baddest guy in there on earth, you know, far from it. There's a lot of bad people out there. I know my hands are good. I know my ground game's good. I know I'm in good shape. I can step up and fight anytime. You know, I carry that with me. It's not a chip on my shoulder. I treat people just the way that I want to be treated. I talk to a homeless guy the same way I'll talk to a, a business executive. You know, yes, sir, no, sir. Uh, Keep working on that. It works really well, especially if the guy isn't clued into it. The last couple times he started, you know, noticing what I was going to do. So that's why I went for the sweep and then went straight in the arm bar. And then there's, I have, I have a series that I do. Yeah. The sweep side, try and block it and still left my arm on it. I'll reach around, grab the other arm, shoot my knee in, and then hook your knee, your knee and roll you over. So I do like three or four different moves in, in sequence. Insane, yeah. That way, you know, when a guy's trying to punch, you keep him busy, you know, because he's, he's going to get swept. You know, so he's going to stop thinking about punching and more defending himself. Yeah, let me get your number. I need a Tuesdays and Fridays spot. I think some people kind of get really into the whole, I'm gonna fucking kill this guy. I can't believe this dude thought he could step in the ring with me. And I'm just different. I don't have to get like that to, to go out there and do my thing. I'm just going out there to do my thing. It's hard for me to get a fight uh, just because of my weight. Trying to get people matched up similar experience. So, you know, I'm not gonna put in all that mental effort and then fight a guy that's, you know, trained for two weeks. I mean, what am I, what am I proving or testing there? Nothing, you know? Priority of, of having a happy marriage, because to be honest, without that, it's all for nothing. Without my wife, it's, it's all, it's, none of it's any good, you know? I feel bad because not many people will ever get the support from somebody that's supposed to support them the way I get support from my wife. Dude, it feels like somebody left, a, left an ice pick right here. I can't shoot baskets the way I used to because of my elbows. Uh, I can only bowl two games of bowling. Uh, my elbow starts to, you know, hurt so bad that it's not worth it. Um, I can run. I can uh, throw. I can do all that. What's the phrase? Your actions speak so loud I can't hear what you say. So I talk about how I love my wife and, and all this. But to be honest, Monday night I train at Foster's. Tuesday night I'm working at Ivan Salivary's. Wednesday night I'm at Foster's. Thursday night I'm at Ivan Salivary's. Friday night I'm at Foster's. Saturday I'm with my family. Sunday I'm going to be back into Foster's. So seven days. Saturday I'm with the family. This is, this is, I dig this. My kids get, you know, my kids think it's cool. My dad's a fighter. My dad fights. You know, they think that's cool. But, you know, they don't know any different. My little palm pilot, you break stuff down by color, right? My work stuff is yellow, my training is red, my personal stuff is blue. And I can pull up for the month and it shows by color code. Oh look, you trained Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday. Malcolm will never be 14 again. And Bradley will never be 10 and Nico will never be eight. You know? Well, I gotta get up at 5.30 to go to work. Well, right now it's, 9.15. 9.15, I'm not going to get home. Uh, it'll be almost 10 o'clock. So by the time I hop my shower and check emails and go through crap, 11. So 5 o'clock will be like 6, 6 hours of sleep. 36, man. I'm pushing my body pretty hard right now. Side control. Head control. Other side. Other side. Other side. Side control. Hip control. Side control. Good. Get back in. Explosion. It's a piston. That's it. It lands on that squat, that front leg squat. Boom. And drive back. Look at the footwork. Look at the footwork. And the extension of that squat is your extension of your jab. Pop. And back. That's it. Pop. That's it. It's cool to get the chance to work with Jeff here. He's a great, really nice, really respectful guy. He's my age, which is cool. And he's competing in MMA, which I would love to do someday. And, um, you know, I'm gonna use him as an inspiration. And he's been training a lot longer than me. And I'm gonna train hard and hopefully I can someday 
before I get too over the hill, do an MMA competition. I mean, it is, it is easy for me to put on a show and be cocky yeah. and be flooded with a cocky feeling and then yeah. feel like pretty cool and all that. Or I can f make all kinds of phony things, you see what I mean? Blinded by it. Or I can show you some f really fancy movement. But to express oneself honestly, not lying to oneself, and to express myself honestly, not that, my friend, is very hard to do and you have to train you have to keep your reflexes so that when you want it it's there so you know we sharpen all his tools josh could win you know many different ways the way to win will present itself you know whatever mistake this guy makes whether he's you know winging bombs and dropping his hands josh will clip him or you know uh, catch him with the submission on the ground you know Josh is just going to fight, and when his opportunity arises and whatever mistake this guy makes, uh, Josh is going to capitalize on it, and that'll be that. You know? Something I never experienced before, and I'm going to get to do it tomorrow night. I'm a nervous wreck. He's always totally calm because that's just how he is. I mean, he's like a kid at Christmas. This is what he lives for. He's been training, and, you know, so this is it. Um, I'm you know, dealing. <laughs> um, fortunately, I have a wonderful support group that will be there with me tonight, and so they help keep me um, calm. He is in great condition. He's had great coaching. I know that, that he's going to do great. It's just the whole sitting there watching somebody want to hurt your husband thing that um, is nerve-wracking. It was a lot to drink, but I mean, I wasn't... 6.30, they're, they're going to start at 6.30, and then I'm going to leave here probably 5.30 or so. And yeah. your mother wants no blood. Yeah, there we go. It's gonna be hard sitting there like watching all three minutes. And don't let hit you. Yeah. <laughs> Two new coaches right here, hon. <laughs> well, what if this guy's better than I am? What if he's got better hands? What if I get in trouble? I see in the sheet, you know, his profile says, good hands, good ground. Whatever. Stuff happens, but there's nothing really to be nervous about. I'm sure everyone gets nervous. I'm, I'm nervous. I go and, and punish myself every single day. It, it's not that I don't take it serious, because it's very serious. I mean, what we do is, is I mean, very serious. You know, I put myself through hell and back on a daily basis to be able to do this. I'm still, I'm still going to do what I have to do. I mean, you're in there. You're with bad intentions. You're trying to hurt. You're trying to hurt. I mean, you don't want to cause long-term injury, but you're trying to overload their, you know, their, their brain with too much, you know, banging around the inside of their head and have them say, mm, you need to go to sleep, man. I believe I put in the hard work. I have good coaches that guide me through it. The stress of, of people watching you, it being, you know, a fight, an actual fight, where as opposed to practice, you're just going, you know, 60, 70, 80%. If I didn't train hard and I was kicking it and fucking smoking and drinking and shit and all this shit, then yeah. Or you're trying to take a joint that normally functions just fine and you need to have them feel that they're in danger of that joint stopping to work. This guy's probably fucking super good shape and, you know, but I, I know I didn't do any of that shit. I fucking spend my Friday and Saturday nights training, so. You zoom in like a laser beam on the guy and it's business, you know. We'll see how hard he strikes. Cut off both arteries or air supply. You know, arteries to the brain or air supply long enough to, to induce unconsciousness, and then you let go. You know, it's like a mental game of chess, but you're using your body in just a different way. You just want that little bit of a time where, you know, the rules state you're the winner. And he's in there to do the same thing I'm there to do to him, so. And he's, you know, he's doing the same thing. He's thinking the same thing. But as far as something to be nervous about, making a mortgage payment is something to be nervous about, you know? Trying to get your kids the right education. Put money away for college for three kids. That's something to be nervous about. I wouldn't have trained or nothing if I didn't have fun doing this. You know, I'm good at hurting people. I always have been. And uh, why not go into a profession where if you're good at making people hurt, make money at it. I can't wait. Another 130 pound dude trying to punch you and kick you in the head. Ain't all that big a deal, man, really. In the grand scheme. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's important and I want to win. At the end of my days, that ain't what I'll be judged on. You know, was I a good guy? 
Did I live a, you know, did I live a good life? Did I make things better for people? Dogs. That's what matters long term, so. Why would they want to learn Chinese martial art? Because of a movie role? All type of knowledge ultimately means self-knowledge. Mm -hmm. So therefore, they are coming in and ask me to teach them not so much of how to defend themselves or how to do somebody in. Rather, they want to learn to express themselves through some movement, be it anger, be it uh, determination or whatsoever. So in other words, what I'm saying, therefore, is that he is paying me to show him in combative form the art of expressing the human body. So um, with that said, you know, I'm the boss in there. Obey my command at all times. What I say goes, show me good sportsmanship at all times. Let's protect the integrity of our sport. It's an extreme aggressive sport, and we want to maintain your guys' safety. Our job is to make sure things are safe and the fights are judged fairly. All right, I'm going to go over the illegal techniques, what would be considered a foul or worth me taking a point away for the mixed martial arts for MMA, okay? Headbutting is illegal. Eye gouging is illegal. Biting, hair pulling, fish hooking, groin attacks of any kind is illegal. Putting a finger into an orifice, an eye, a cut, a laceration, grabbing the clavicle or small joint manipulation, fingers and toes is illegal. I am a bit nervous. I care about him and like uh, just want him to perform up to his ability and I'll be happy win or lose as long as he does that. I get scared either way. I, I get scared at home watching fights, you know? I get nervous for dudes. And well, anybody can watch two guys fight and be like, whoa, wow, that was crazy. But once you have a connection with that person, you know him outside of a, a fighting and this and that, then you care about him and you know, it makes it a little bit more uh, you know, emotional. He doesn't have any quit in him. He won't quit. He'll keep fighting all the way till the end of the match. He, I never have to worry about him stopping and, and uh, quitting too early or mentally shutting down. So Jeff will go out there and he'll fight all the way through the end, no matter how he's doing. Win, lose, draw, he'll, he'll fight with all his heart. Anytime one of your guys is out there, it's like it's a part of you being out there. So. Not, you you want to see them do well, but the main thing you want them to is be safe and not get injured. So that's always my main concern is I don't really care who wins. I want them to be injury free. I want him to do his best and I, want, I don't want either guy to get hurt. So hopefully if everything goes well, we'll come out of here and uh, get another win. What's the game plan? Uh, test him on the feet. Hopefully they end up on the ground. Submission or grinding out the strikes. Just grind them out, yeah. Can you throw uh, elbows to the body mm -hmm. on the ground? Mm -hmm. No elbows to the head, though? No elbows. I'm guessing. Yeah. Standing, no elbows. No elbows. Knees. Knees to the as base. As long as he's not down. Yeah. Knees to the body on the ground? Yep. Cool. So basic UFC type of rules, except for no elbows? Yeah. On the ground? Yeah. When you want to win, you want to do it fast and convincing, but do it smart, okay? Go out there and be aggressive, but don't go out there and be like super aggressive where you're going to blow your bot, okay? The highlight will come. Just do what you train like you've been training and push the pace on him, but don't go crazy. That's when you're going to make mistakes, okay? The he'll pick which, what, what else he's going to give you, whether it's his chin, his neck, okay? So just do uh, this. Yeah.
empty. Em empty. You, you just don't. You just want to be relaxed. You want to be make sure that right now everything's relaxed. Uh, your shoulders are relaxed. Your hips are relaxed. Your mind is not anywhere worried. You know. You just want to be chill. And then slowly you build up the momentum. It's a certain energy that you evolve to fight to be a warrior. blessed with a 10 second knockout good for you but most of the time you're gonna be fighting at the very least a good seven minutes seven minutes in is an eternity is to show my kids how to be men because there's not enough of them around mm -hmm. what kind of man are you when you lost yeah. are you one of the dudes that said yeah I gave it a shot and then you quit training mm -hmm. or are you one of the dudes that said man I can't believe how bad that sucked yeah. I'm not I'm going to train harder for the next one and you know you never guarantee a win
I feel like shit, man. I let everybody down. I let everybody down, man. That's all. So I just feel like you let everybody down. Oh, no, God, no, stop, brother, stop. You didn't let anybody no down, way. buddy. I ain't gonna lie, man, that little shit hit me and I saw a double for a second. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Hey, oh, nothing to be sorry about, man. There's nothing to be sorry about. There's nothing to be sorry about. 3027, that's some bullshit. That is bullshit. That, that is Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I mean, you know. Oh, man. I can go to Dick's Burger now? Yes, you can. <laughs> yeah, you, can you can have your Dick's Deluxe and the nasty fries. And uh. Milkshake and all that shit. He's got heart, bro. He came in all the way through. You know, the whole, the whole through the, the three rounds was complete action. They were working hard, both of them. You know what I mean? So he needs to just come in and, and work out a little bit more of the striking. That after a, a, a flare of combination and receiving punches, uh, that you're able to come back from that. I mean, that takes a lot of heart. And not only that, but take control. It's a labor of love. No two ways about it. It's a labor of love. 
Because you ain't getting paid, so there's only one other reason you do it. They're going to fucking yell for you, they're going to cheer for you, they're going to howl for you, baby. Visualization, it's almost like a way of being able to practice it without actually getting out there in the ring. So if you're really good at focusing and, and seeing what your game plan's going to be and going over that game plan in your mind, it's going to be easier to adapt that in the ring. Whereas if you go in there with no plan, the fight's being dictated by your opponent. So you're reacting instead of being active, you're being reactive. You need Kobe to be the one pushing his game plan, not the other guy dictating where the fight goes. I go to the ballet with my wife. Ain't my thing. Don't dig it. But are they athletes and is it cool what they can do? Yeah, that's cool what they can do. To be able to jump and control your body and do all that stuff. Do all the things that they can do. I want to try it. Ain't my thing. But does that mean that they don't deserve respect for the hours that they put in and the training that they put in and the things that they sacrifice? Absolutely they deserve that respect. It's just not something I want to try. That's cool. Fine, it may not be for you, but understand the beauty of what's happening. When two trained athletes go out there and try to impose their will on the other guy, and then now this guy has to go to plan B. This guy went to plan B, so this guy has to go to plan A minus, because he's winning. And then all of a sudden this guy turns it, and now this guy's on plan C. This guy's back on plan A. And you watch a trained athlete impose his will like that, and you know, think and react and all of these different pieces that have to come together to watch that, that's cool. It was like a really good chess game. Um, 
physically. I mean, I had to. He challenged me on on uh, on levels that I didn't work on. Um, so that made me really have to really have to think and, and uh, kind of dig something up. You know, to have a fight that challenged me and stimulated me in, in a way that I uh, I liked. It was fun. It was just a good challenge. Do you still think of yourself Chinese, or do you ever think of yourself as North American? You, you, you know what I want to think of myself? As a human being. Under the sky, under the heaven, man, there is but one family. It just so happened, man, that people are different. I told, told my buddies, I was like, I want to be in the best shape of my life. I want to wear my takedowns. I did a lot of jiu-jitsu, and I did a lot of to stand up boxing and everything and my takedowns and I was like and then when I found out before I didn't know it was you that I was fighting they were like yeah you're fighting two times state champion and I was like oh that's funny that's what they told me yeah. <laughs> I ain't bullshit <laughs> I'm not I crossed my heart that's it two time wrestling state champion and I'm like damn I never wrestled in high school I never wrestled just, yeah dude hey when I walked out dude it was loud bro I was like oh fuck dude yeah, this is just beginning man I'm, I'm I'm gonna fight again. I can't explain it, dude. It feels so good. He worked so hard. He earned that. It's awesome. I'm, I'm very proud to have been a, a small part of that and, and to know how hard he worked and how much better a man he is now than he was before. It's, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to cheat it out, but I'm so fucking long, like I just naturally skip a step. You skip steps? I didn't skip no. Like you, you skip, he got it on tape, man. Did you skip steps? Man, I'm so fucking did, long. No, no, no. Look at me, man. You get damped? Yeah. No, but I train jujitsu. <laughs> What's the best part of training you? It's fun. I don't think about breaking a sweat or working out because I'm lazy. So I get all the exercise I want. Every move that you learn in jujitsu, you could apply that to anything in life. Well, when you first learn a move, it's really hard for you at first. And you feel like a cripple. You know, and you can barely do it, and you feel like, how am I ever gonna do this move? But you just somehow stick it out, and then after a couple years, it's smooth. And now you're like, damn, you're like a ninja with that. And then now you know the next time you get something that feels awkward to you, you're like, I know if I stick it out, you get a ninja. People who do compete in it, and the two competitors, they, they know what the other person has done to prepare. It's not just going out and brawling like you go to a bar and you see some drunk guys. Well, most friends get drunk and fight each other for free on the weekends. At least we get to get paid for it, do something we love doing, make positive choices, train hard, be healthy, compete. We're doing a sport we love doing. Afterwards, we'll hang out, train together again. <laughs> There's nothing that I can, uh, you know, I could even come close to, to comparing it to maybe having sex in public or something. I don't know. <laughs> you gotta be cool with throwing up. You gotta be cool with dying. My knee, my heel, that ain't making this easy. Pain, 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 pain. Laying on the beach, listening to the waves, you know? Sometimes I pull myself back. No, 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 feel it. Feel the pain, feel the hurt. Don't wash it away. Feel it. Take it. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> that guy's <is> strong! Wow! <laughs> Holy Dude, you don't push me that hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I'm just... <laughs>